and welcome uh, to the climate. We're letting one more person in here, but welcome to the climate action crash course webinar series. We are so excited uh, to see all of your faces and to be on here tonight to talk about all things climate change, to talk about what we as young people can do to help our environment, and to learn from a bunch of amazing panelists and other youth activists about the work that they're doing and how we can support them. So with that, I'm just going to introduce myself. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Goody. I am the founder of of Climate Now. And over here with the same backgrounds, we've got Siona and Abby, who are also volunteers here at Climate Now. I'm going to share my screen really quickly, and then we can uh, start the presentation. All right. Awesome. Can everyone give me a thumbs up if they can see? Okay, awesome. So, as I said, welcome to the Climate Action Crash Course webinar series. This April, Climate Now is hosting four different webinars for young people of all different ages to learn about climate change and the power of their voices. And we're so excited that today is our first webinar for ages under 10. It just so happens to be April Fool's Day. So, happy April Fool's Day, everyone. Um, and Throughout this course of this webinar, we're going to talk you know, about what climate change is. We're going to talk about why it's important that we take climate action. And again, we're going to learn from some youth activists about the work that they're doing and how we can support them. So who are we? Who is Climate Now? Climate Now is a youth-led organization that really works to educate young people about the issue of climate change and to provide them with the resources to go out into their communities and to make a difference. So the main way that we do that is through working directly uh, with teachers and with schools by going into the classrooms and providing uh, presentations and speaking to students about this issue. Uh, to date, we've spoken with over 10,000 students at 70 plus schools from around the world in places like Italy, Africa, um, in India, and also here in the United States. And we have a, about 30 volunteers who work with us at educating young people, at developing different curriculum, and going into schools and speaking up to students. So this is the format of today's webinar. It should be around 45 minutes to an hour. We're gonna start with an introduction to climate change, then look at the climate movement and what climate action is. Then we have a panel with our guest speakers. We have Domingo, we have Ailey, we have Robbie, and we have Ava. We're doing some amazing work to help our planet. Then we have a quick video from a celebrity guest, and then we will be closing up and talking about next steps and action plans uh, so that you can continue taking action beyond this webinar today. So for starters, what is climate change? I want everyone to go into the chat and put what they think climate change is. It doesn't have to be right. It can be wrong. Um, it can be totally crazy. I just would love to hear what you guys think and some general guesses. So when we're talking about climate change, we're talking about the long-term changes that are happening to our global temperature and the characteristics that are changing within our atmosphere. So the world's climate has changed many times, but what's different and what's so special about the climate change that's happening now is that it is cause and is a direct result of human activity. So that might be kind of confusing and might not make sense, but that's okay. That's what we're here for. That's what we're going to go into and further examine today. So in order to better understand climate change, let's separate the difference between weather and climate. So weather is talking about the conditions outside right now in a specific place. Can you raise your hand if you've ever seen a weatherman on TV, if you've ever opened the weather app on your phone or your parents' phone? 
Yeah, that's that's a lot of us. And we do that, you know, very often because weather is something that changes day to day. It's, you know, it's always changing. For example, the weather outside for me right now could be sunny, but tomorrow it could be rainy and the weather uh, app is going to tell me whether I need to wear a raincoat or bring an umbrella to school. So that changes uh, in comparison to climate. And the reason we call this climate change and not weather change is because climate describes the temperature conditions that are expected in a region or the larger temperature changes that are happening over a long period of time. So generally what we're talking about when referring to climate change is how is our world's temperatures increasing? How is our world getting warmer and hotter because of human activity? And in order to continue understanding climate change, let's look at this term called carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, also known as CO2, is a natural gas. It's a greenhouse gas that is produced by all humans. It's actually something very natural. It's in the air, it's microscopic, you can't see it. And it's not a bad thing, but what's being what's bad and what's become a problem is that we as humans have started putting so much carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. So imagine like a bathtub that's filling up with water. It's not going to be a problem if you stop at that halfway point where the bathtub isn't going to overflow. But if you continuously put more water into that bathtub, it's gonna start to overflow. So that's what's happening. We are putting so much carbon dioxide into our atmosphere that it's too much. It's almost like it's starting to overflow. So here is a video that goes a little more in depth about what carbon dioxide is and hopefully will help us better understand what climate change is. Lately, we've been hearing a lot about global warming and words like carbon footprint climate shift, carbon dioxide, and climate change. But what is carbon? And what does it have to do with climate change? Carbon is everywhere in the ecosystem. And it is always moving. Some of it is floating in the atmosphere. Plants absorb carbon from the air and store it in their bodies. When animals eat plants, they eat carbon. And when something bigger eats those animals, they're having a carbon snack too. But that carbon won't stay still for long. When an animal poops or something dies, carbon moves around again. Some of it is held in the soil for a while. And eventually, most of it ends up back in the atmosphere. The same type of process happens in the oceans too. Most of the carbon dioxide gas on Earth is actually dissolved in ocean water. Some of the carbon from dead plants and animals was trapped underground and over millions and millions of years, it turned into coal, oil, and gas. And that's pretty much how the system works. Some carbon has stayed deep underground for millions of years, but the rest moves around the ecosystem from the air to plants to animals and back into the atmosphere. And that's the story of the carbon cycle. Well, it was, until we came along. We've been cutting down a lot of forests that used to absorb carbon from the atmosphere. And we've been digging up carbon from deep underground and burning it for energy. Doing that pumps that old carbon back into the air. By getting rid of plants and burning lots of fossil fuels, we've changed the system. The atmosphere is filling up with carbon faster than plants and oceans can absorb it. All this extra carbon in the air is like a blanket around the earth that traps in extra heat from the sun. And things are changing all over the globe. But now that we know that we are part of the system, we can do things to keep it in balance. We can stop chopping down forests and plant trees. We can use less energy. All right. 
I'm going to stop that there. But what I like about this video is it really shows uh, the carbon cycle and it shows that point where it's becoming too much or where it's becoming dangerous. And when talking about carbon dioxide, I really like to refer to our atmosphere and talk about how it's almost like our atmosphere is covered in a blanket. So if you were in a blanket and then all of a sudden people started throwing more blankets on you, over time, you would probably start to get really hot. You would start to maybe even get dizzy. So imagine carbon dioxide as a blanket that's covering our earth. And when we put more and more carbon dioxide into our atmosphere, that blanket is getting warmer, it's getting thicker, and our planet is getting hotter. And it's starting to feel trapped. It's starting to feel dizzy and overwhelmed. So there's lots of different things that contribute to climate change and that put more carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. Some of those things are cars. Uh, cars rely on fossil fuels. And when you burn fossil fuels, you put carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. Uh, animal agriculture or eating animals, that's also another thing or activity that humans do that is contributing to climate change. And that's because within the United States, we raise over 7 billion animals for food every single year. And animals in their digestive uh, tract and their digestive system actually put out something called methane, which is really similar to carbon dioxide, but even more stronger and is even more powerful at warming up our planet. So eating a lot of meat and when we're doing it at such this high level, I mean, 70 billion animals, that's kind of crazy. That's putting a lot of methane emissions and carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. Another example is electricity. In order to get electricity, a lot of the times we use fossil fuels, so burn those again uh, to create electricity. Uh, things that are made with plastic, it takes fossil fuels to create plastic, and then plastic takes so long to biodegrade. So not only is that putting more carbon dioxide into our atmosphere, it's also starting to pollute our earth. And similar to cars, we have planes, which is another mode of transportation that releases a lot of carbon dioxide. Uh, being on your computer all the time or on a tablet, that uses a lot of energy and that can start uh, to require more carbon dioxide and fossil fuels. Other things are like uh, getting a package delivered to your house or cutting down trees. What's so special about plants and trees is that they're actually uh, a natural solution to climate change. They absorb carbon dioxide and put out oxygen in our atmosphere, which is something that we all need to breathe. So by cutting down trees, we're actually releasing more carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. And you know, we're also getting rid of this breathing organism that is putting more oxygen into our atmosphere that we all need. Now that we understand what climate change is, let's just talk about why it matters. So yeah, I, I, I get what this is, or I, I, I'm starting to understand what climate change is, but what does it have to do with me? Well, let's look at the three main impacts that climate change has. The first impact of climate change is on nature. Because our planet is getting warmer, that is fueling natural disasters like wildfires, tornadoes, hurricanes, Let's take wildfires, for example. What happens when things get dry? They catch on fire easier. So now we're seeing these record-breaking wildfires in places like California and Australia that are absolutely devastating the land and the people there. It's also contributing to things like sea level rise, ocean acidification, and the overall destruction of some of our key ecosystems. And that brings us to the next impact which is climate change's impact on wildlife. Millions of species are at risk of extinction. That's more than 38% of the animal species on our planet today because of climate change. So I'm gonna go ahead and list off some different animals and I want you to uh, raise your hand and keep it in your mind if you either like that animal, if it's your favorite animal, or you've ever felt compassion or wanted to help that animal. Um, so a polar bear, a sloth, a shark, um, a sea turtle, a tiger, let's see, a dolphin, uh, a monkey. So all those animals that I just listed off are endangered 
because of climate change, because they rely on our ecosystems and they rely on nature. When our nature is collapsing and when our nature is in danger, that's putting our wildlife in danger. So climate change, it's important that we take action because this isn't just affecting humans. This isn't just affecting plants. It's also affecting the animals that we care about. And then the last impact and what might seem like the scariest impact is the impact that climate change has on humans. Because it's really hard to live in a world where wildlife isn't thriving, where we're having all of these natural or so-called natural events happening. Um, take wildfires, for example. If we're constantly running away from wildfires and we're constantly running away from sea level rise and floods, it's going to be really hard to just go about our normal day. So it's really important that we start talking about climate change because it has these impacts on nature, on wildlife, and on humans. So that all is a lot, and that can be really scary, and that's because it is. But there's also a hopeful side, and there's something that all of us can do, and there's stuff that people are already doing today to combat climate change. So let's talk about what this is, what people are doing, and the youth climate movement. To start off, what does it mean to take action? Taking action is deciding to do something specific to combat a problem or to help someone. So over the past about five years to 10 years, young people from around the world, young people like you and me from the youngest ages of one and two uh, to up into their 20s and 30s and 40s and beyond are coming together and saying enough is enough. We know that climate change is hurting our environment, is hurting people, is hurting wildlife, and we want to do something about it. And what's so special about the youth climate movement and youth climate activism is that it looks like so many different things for so many different people. And that's why I'm excited to introduce today's panel. So now we are moving into our panel side of things. We have four different amazing panelists and youth activists who are here today to talk to all of you about their work, about what they do, and to answer your questions about climate change. So we have Robbie Bond from Kids Speak for Parks. We have Eva Acevedo from Green Schools Campaign, Domingo Cortinez from Earth Echo, and Eileen Scott from CCL Youth Action Team. So Robbie created his nonprofit Kids Speak for Parks to ensure that our national parks and monuments remain protected long into the future. Ava is a high school junior working with the Green Schools Campaign and aims to increase environmental advocacy at our school and club and inspires others to make a difference in other people's lives. And then Domingo is a student at the University of Chicago who's double majoring in public policy and environmental and urban studies. He is a Miami native and currently serves on the Youth Leadership Council for Earth Echo International. And then Eileen has been a member of Citizens Climate Lobby for two years now and is working as a member of the National Citizens Climate Lobby Youth Action Team. In June of 2019, Eileen lobbied two members of Congress on Capitol Hill. So welcome to all of our amazing panelists. We are so, so, so excited to have you here. I'm going to start spotlighting all of our panelists. Perfect. Awesome. Hi guys, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Today has been going really well. Awesome. Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, we're so excited to have you. I'm super excited to be here. Awesome. All right, to start off, I'm just going to have everyone go around and I know I just did some introductions, but you know, if there's anything else I didn't touch on anything that you want to share with us, who you are, or what you do, uh, we'd love to hear that. So let's start off with Ava. And then you can just call on another person when you're done. Yeah, so hi, everybody. Um, super nice to meet you and happy to see all of you here. Uh, my name is Ava, and I am currently in high school, and I'm part of the Green Schools Campaign. Um, I first got really interested in helping um, the environment. It kind of 
um, especially when I was in elementary school, I loved learning about like the birds and the way that all the different trees would grow. And I was just really into um, plants and animals and things like that. And as I started getting into high school, um, I would buy my school lunch every day. And every day I would throw away a lot of plastic and paper and everybody else in the school did too. And it just started bothering me a little bit because I started um, really thinking about where is all of this going? And it really started dawning on me that um, through other people talking about it, like in school, that climate change was a problem. And I felt the responsibility to take action on it. So I've, um, a lot of people have come forward and I've been presented with so many opportunities to take action. And um, the Green Schools campaign is probably one of my favorites because we help um, schools from um, elementary schools, middle schools, uh, high schools and colleges to transition their um, schools and their districts to 100% clean renewable energy, um, which is a really important part of um, making sure that we don't have a really big carbon footprint and that we're saving the energy we can and taking some energy from the sun so that it's clean for our future. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ava, for sharing. Uh, Robbie, do you want to go ahead? For sure, yeah. Um, Ava, that was really cool what you've been working on. Um, what I'm working on is, uh, like Sarah said, I started a nonprofit called Kids Speak for Parks, and I'm dedicated to educating kids about the importance of our national parks and monuments, and also encouraging them to realize how they can start to protect our national parks and monuments. And um, something I've been working on for the past couple of years is developing a virtual reality education system where kids can use virtual reality to get out into the national parks when they normally wouldn't be able to do so. And I think that's really important because it allows other kids to see the parks for themselves, especially when some kids don't have the money or their parents don't wanna take them to the parks. But um, recently I've been focusing on getting plastic pollution out of national parks and also helping the national parks because climate change is a number one threat to our parks. So I'll pass it on to Domingo. Hi everyone, oh, I'm Domingo. Domingo. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's totally fine. Uh, I'm Domingo. I serve on the Youth Leadership Council for Earth Echo International. Um, Earth Echo is a nonprofit really focused on environmental education and water conservation. Um, so on their council, I've been able to teach over 500 kids about the climate crisis and water conservation. Um, I go to different schools. I bring uh, buckets of ocean water. They get to taste, uh, test out the water and um, decide for themselves if it's healthy or not. Um, recently, we've been shifting to more of a policy focus, um, focusing on the 30 by 30 movement. Um, which is a movement to protect 30% of the oceans by 2030. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. And go ahead, Ali. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Ali Scott, and I am a member of Citizens Climate Lobby, which is an organization that focuses on getting a bill passed through Congress um, that would help put a price on carbon, which would essentially pull a bunch of levers to make sure that um, the market and just um, people in the USA shift uh, toward renewable energy, which is energy from the sun and energy from wind and the earth, which is a lot better for our environment. Um, so yeah, I first started um, like similar to Ava, I always cared a lot about animals and plants when I was a kid and um, living in a place where I am surrounded by nature, I learned about um, like the concept of climate change at a pretty young age, but it never really hit me that um, youth could do something about it until I was maybe in fourth grade and my elementary school class decided to try and outlaw plastic straws in my town, um, which was ultimately semi-successful, but it really, opened my eyes to all the things that youth can do to help um, our planet. It's amazing. Thank you everyone for sharing. I guess going off of that, what do all of you, what is the role uh, of young people in fighting climate change? Why is it important that young people, the young people here watching today, uh, go out and do something? And what has your experience been like being, you know, a, a younger person in this climate movement? Have, uh, what challenges have you faced? Has it been hard only being, you know, 13 or 14 or 19? Uh, what is that like for you? And anyone, anyone can start, whoever wants to pick up that question. Sure. Um, I'll answer the first part of the question about why it's important for kids to speak up about climate activism. 
And I believe it's important for kids to talk about that because we're going to be around the longest to feel the impacts of what's happening today. And also, I feel like a lot, uh, no, I feel like adults are more inclined to listen to kids because it's unique. You know, a lot of kids aren't as interested in activism, but when, adult, when an adult sees a kid who is super passionate about something, they're more likely to listen, which is really important. Yes, I 100% agree with what you just said, Robbie. Um, and kind of building off of that, like it can be, it can be really, it can feel intimidating as um, a young person and as um, a kid when you um, you feel like maybe other people aren't going to take you seriously because you're younger. But um, just like Robbie said, they are really, really care about what you have to say because um, you're so unique and you're showing that you care about it. And you're also your community's future. So they know that they have to depend on you for everything that happens in the future. Yeah, um, just to go off of that, um, it really can be intimidating as a youth um, to speak out. You have to realize that your voice is important um, and that a lot of people actually like the feedback um, and that you can be like the push to actual, to creating change for that. Yeah, building off what everybody has said, I think it's so important for youth to get involved because like Robbie said, we are the leaders of tomorrow. We are the people that are going to be um, the leaders of countries and the adults that will have to deal with the implications of climate change. And I think it can definitely be intimidating be, being the youngest person in the room and um, I thought when I was first starting out in climate action, especially when I went to lobby Congress, I thought nobody would take me seriously because how could they take a 10 year old kid seriously in a room full of adults? But um, I really found that it's when people see a kid who seems to know what they're talking about and really care about something, then they're inclined to take a step back and say, oh, wow, um, this must be a really serious issue if even the kids are taking a moment out of their lives to try and um, impact us. So I think that as youth, um, our voices have a different type of impact than adult, adults do, but it's just as important. Thank you everyone for sharing. I, I think my next question is climate change, it's, it's a scary issue. So what continues to motivate you to take action and um, how do you keep a positive mindset while um, you're going about and solving these problems which can be really scary? Uh, I can start off. Um, so I grew up in Miami, so sea level rise is kind of a normal thing. Um, and for kids, it's, it's normal to kayak down flooded streets. Um, but as you grow up, you start to realize that um, it's not normal <laughs> that you shouldn't be kayaking down these flooded streets. Um, and so really you start seeing it firsthand. Um, and for me, the really, the pinnacle point of my climate um, action was Hurricane Irma um, and the fear and, the, and how scared I was of that. That's what pushed me into it. Um, but you have to realize that every single day, someone is making a difference. Um, and there's always a, a positive movement for the environmental movement. It's growing every year. And so that's what pushes me forward. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, oh, go how I like remain like passionate and like inspired to work on this is um, I really do believe that national parks need someone to protect them because after like witnessing how beautiful they are firsthand, I realize that they're so important and we need to preserve them so that other kids like me can be just as happy in national parks. So that's why I do my work. And whoever wants to go next, go ahead. Yeah, I think um, it is true that it's, it's really easy to feel like hopeless about climate change, um, especially the more you learn about it. But um, I really think, uh, I believe that faith gets you farther than fear will ever get you. So um, taking, taking that um, fear of climate change and, and translating it into doing something about it, um, it makes you feel a lot better because um, you can know that when the dust settles, you did everything that you could and you impacted as many lives as possible 
to try and um, fight for like future generations and fight for ourselves. So I think that um, just looking forward and always thinking to yourself that um, if I give up now, then everything I've done will be for nothing. Um, just that really helps. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that um, kind of like you just said, like we have to be that change that we want to see because um, just to keep in mind that like if if we don't do it and like if all of you um, don't take that action, then nobody else will. And so we just always have to keep that in mind that like we are the change that we really want to see. And also just kind of like you said, that really personal fulfillment that you get from um, from doing something instead of um, worrying about it a little bit more, but focusing on like action and doing things and speaking out about it really helps you feel so much better. Awesome, and I know some people have their hands raised, so we'll call on you in a second to ask any questions you might have for our panelists. Um, but, you know, as a final question, what advice do you have for someone who's watching right now and wondering how they can get involved, who's maybe doubting um, how powerful they truly is? What is your advice or an action that you think uh, that other people uh, should take um, that can help our planet right now? Um, um, can you repeat the question? You kind of cut out for me towards that. Oh, no worries. Just what is what advice do you have for people who are listening right now, and how can they uh, get involved either in the work that you're doing or uh, make an impact? What would you recommend for them? Oh, um, well, my advice for people who want to start out in activism is to pick something that you're really interested in to work on, because um, I feel like a lot of people will notice if your work isn't genuine, and you also have a lot more fun working on something that you really believe needs to change. So picking something that you believe will be fun to work on and that will have a big impact is really important because that helps you find the like commitment and the uh, perseverance if you really enjoy what you're working on. And also to uh, take it like, obviously not take it as serious, but uh, take it and have fun with it. I feel like that's uh, really important because it prevents burnout and that's a really big problem, especially when you're so in over your head with a problem as big as climate change or anything else. Yeah, I would say, um, like Robbie said, people will def definitely um, notice if you're fighting for something that maybe you don't understand or you're not completely passionate about. And there are so many different um, parts uh, of climate change and there are so many different ways to help. So I think, um, like Robbie said, picking one that you really are interested in and even picking one that maybe you've had the most experience with firsthand um, is really important. And I just think making changes in your own life is really important if you want to influence change in anyone else's life. So taking a look at your own habits or like the habits of your family and people in your town um, and then trying to be more environmentally conscious like every day, um, that really helps you get on the right track so that you can influence other people's lives as well as your own. Yeah, I would just say, don't be afraid to go um, outside your comfort zone and find activities or just to start a campaign. Um, that's not part of a club or not part of an organization. Don't be afraid to be the voice that leads um, change. Um, that's how most the most important change can usually occur. Yeah, I agree. And I would say that um, even just, um, you can always start small, like look around um, your own house, like um, Ailey was saying, and look around at um, what your family is doing. You can um, ask your family, hey, can we maybe start, um, stop using paper plates and start using um, reusable ones or utensils, any little things like that. Maybe we could um, use the air conditioning a little bit less, or let's, how about we turn off the lights when we leave the room? Just little habits like that can really make a difference. Asking your family if you can start a garden if you don't have one. And even looking around um, your own town, like the parks in your town or at your own school, um, the trees, and thinking about hmm, maybe there's some somewhere where we can plant more trees or plant more flowers. And you can um, ask your teacher about that, your parents or something like that.
Yeah, Ava's totally right about all of that. But um, another thing that's, I believe, equally as important as doing all of that is encouraging other people that you know to do those same actions. Because that's what will have the most impact is convincing. If you convince like five other people to make an impact, that'll do much more than just doing it yourself. But that's not to say that you shouldn't do that yourself. You totally should, because it'll set a good example for your friends to follow suit with what you're doing. Also, um, if you like talk to your teachers or a principal and ask to like speak in front of your school, if it's a cause that's like actually is like just and would make a difference, I feel like they'd be really um, thankful to have you make a good impression on the other students. That's just my opinion. <laughs> I don't know if that really answered the habits question, but that's that's like the habit that you can have. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you guys answer that that really great. And I hope that um, that answered your question about habits uh, that you can take. And, um, you know, I, I think just having conversations, looking within your own life, seeing what what actions you can take to better your own carbon footprint, and then just being uh, curious and being um, excited to learn more about this issue. And constantly, I mean, you're never going to know everything. So always just being on the lookout for what what new things you can learn and how you can uh, be a better expert on this topic. Um, so Rachel just put a question in the chat and she wants to know what actions uh, would any of you guys like to see the new US administration take for your futures? Um, well, I could start off. Um, I would really like to see this new administration um, finally put through the Energy Innovation Carbon Dividend Act, um, which CCL has been lobbying and pushing for for so long, because um, that would really be an incredible, um, it'd be a giant impact on the lives of Americans every everywhere and just um, it'd be really gratifying for all the people um, including like myself and all the people in my local chapter that have worked for so long um, to see this happen and just um, I think generally being really open to seeing um, new solutions and new bills that are being made um, in the interest of like converting to renewable energy, like um, being open to putting those through, that'd be really great to see. I totally agree, yeah. I was gonna say that, but um, you answered it first, which is great. I'm happy that other people realize that that needs to change. Um, is it Ollie or Ailey? I, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Ailey. Ailey, I was wrong about that. But um, what a lot of people don't know is that in 2017, President Trump tried to downsize 27 national parks and monuments, which would pretty much just remove the protections that keep those places safe. And I would really love to see um, President Biden or the new administration restore the two national parks and monuments that actually got shrunk, because that would damage the area a lot if he didn't restore the proper boundaries. Yeah, um, going off the conservation, um, emphasis, uh, the infrastructure bill has a lot of room to grow in that regard, um, and especially in terms of the Everglades. Um, it really has a lot of, um, it is really an opportunity in that build infrastructure bill going through Congress right now um, to include Everglades restoration money. Um, and then I'm also, uh, I also really like the Ocean Based Climate Solutions Act. Um, it has not passed yet, but it's a really cool act because it guarantees um, the protection of 30% of the ocean um, by 2030 and also puts in a bunch of cool ocean programs um, for both mitigation and adaption. Yeah, those all sound like really great acts. And I um, I would just really like to see the administration put more um, restrictions on types of plastics and making um, more sustainable packaging a little bit more um, convenient and um, easy for consumers to get just so that we can um, move away from plastics because that's really becoming a problem as they're piling up. Awesome. Yeah, thank you all for sharing those with us. And then just on a last question, I, I see we um, have someone who's wondering just what are some challenges that you faced in the journey of activism and I, I how did you overcome those? If, you know, a few of you want to answer that, that would be awesome. Um, well, the number one challenge. Oh, sorry. Do you want to go ahead? Um, sure. Thanks. 
Um, I'd say the number one challenge I faced was really self-doubt because um, like I said, it's really hard to believe all the time that um, youth can actually make an impact on um, problems um, as big as climate change. So really, um, I think self-doubt holds all of us back to an extent because we just um, always have the little voice in our head saying like, you're still only 12. Do you really think that people are going to listen to you? But um, so that was definitely the largest challenge for me. And uh, I'm still not completely past that. But once I started um, getting into climate change, I just never really, I never stopped taking action because once I realized, once there was that one person who actually listened, it felt like everybody would uh, have their ears open. So I think getting past that initial self-doubt really helps um, open doors for uh, any action you wanna take. Um, yeah, for me, it was uh, really, I was really excited at one point um, to join the environmental movement, to join the climate movement, um, and I wasn't finding opportunities to do that. Um, and so really, you have to think to yourself, um, if there's not those opportunities, you can create those opportunities, you can be the voice making the change. Um, and if even if that's just having a conversation with um, a teacher or your principal about um, making your school more sustainable, you are making a difference in that way. Uh, and so that's just me. Awesome. Um, I, I think we will go ahead and end our panel there, but thank you so much, Eileen, Robbie, Ava, and Domingo. You are all so inspiring, doing incredible work. I, I We posted all of your organizations in the chat, so please go check all of them out. Um, we, we're so appreciative for you guys sharing uh, all your stories and being here with us today. Yeah, thank you, Sarah, for having me on. That was so nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this was great. And I feel like uh, it changed a lot of people's opinions on the stuff we talked about. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. You are also truly incredible. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah and Climate Now. And honestly, like everybody who's here, it's really, really awesome to see like all of you guys who are so young and so into it, like that is honestly super inspiring for me and I think the rest of us so keep doing what you're doing and uh, get involved the way that you are already yeah same it was great to be here um, and it's so great to hear about all the exciting work that everyone else is working so thanks for having me <laughs> awesome thank you so much to our panelists uh, for joining us all right now we are going to go ahead and uh, just hop back on to our presentation for the last end of this, which is just talking again about some actions that we can take. Uh, we have our celeb video and then we will wrap every uh, thing up. So uh, we just had a huge discussion about what you can do. And Siona is just gonna cover those topics really quickly about some of those actions, uh, just so we can refresh our minds and stick it to the point one last time. Yes. Or just with us so we can get it in our brains. There are two different kinds of sections that can be individual action or something just as a person can do, and there's group action. So individual action is this type of form of taking climate action where you just change parts of your everyday life. It's changing your small things you do when you wake up in the morning to when you go back to bed, such as meatless Mondays, when you eat less meat just for just one day, you're, you're reducing methane emissions because you're not buying more of the meat such as beef or lamb and those contribute to methane gas emissions in the atmosphere. Reducing your waste, that's always an amazing thing. We hear it all the time and it's such an easy, amazing action that you can take every day to comp usage your food waste that contributes to landfills and fossil fuel emissions using less transportation buying from thrift stores starting a garden these are all amazing things that you yourself can do to change your own lifestyle to try to be more sustainable for group actions 
freaking the next slide. Thank you. Yeah, okay. This one is also really fun because you can really start your own projects, just as all of our amazing panelists talked about. Even just like starting a conversation. We already talked about starting a conversation with teachers, even with your family members or your friends, just asking them what they think about climate change, trying to make it more normalized to actually talk about how to make change and how to have that inside your life every day. Organizing beach cleanup is really fun because you can just hang out with your friends and help pick up trash. You can get involved with an organization. I said that weird. It, oh yeah, all the things that we have in the chat, all the amazing links, you can check out their websites. They're all amazing and they do such great work and they focus on different topics too. You can start a community garden, write a letter to a little politician. These are all amazing group actions that you can take. So there's your master list. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sienna, for covering those uh, for us. So as a last note, here are some other ways that you can uh, specifically get involved. Here at Climate Now, we have a hero program where we send students 10 clear actions, some of which we've already covered today, that they can take to help our planet. And from there, when they complete those actions, they get certified as a Climate Now hero and join our organization, get connected with our network of youth leaders. It's super fun, super easy, and a great way to just baseline get involved. Uh, we also have a volunteer program. So Siona and Abby are part of that program and volunteer with Climate Now. Our volunteers do everything from social running social media to writing blog posts, uh, creating educational content, speaking to schools. If you're interested in getting more hands on, uh, a little more in depth uh, with us, then that is a perfect way for you to get involved. Uh, we have our partner organizations, all of which are on our website under our webinar tab. And we also have um, all the organizations that uh, whose representatives we just spoke with from Green Schools Campaign to Citizens Climate Lobby, uh, Youth Action uh, to Earth Echo and Kids Speak for Parks. These are all amazing organizations. So maybe you want to get involved with them and uh, join all of their amazing uh, work. If you want to learn more about this topic of climate change, if there's a certain thing that you're um, wondering about, then check out our Learn More page for students. We have one for both students and teachers, which have a whole array of resources from documentaries to people to follow on social media, uh, to websites and blog posts, a whole array of resources that'll help you learn more about this topic of climate change. So spend some time looking through those. You can follow Climate Now on social media if that's something that you have. And then lastly, if you have the means to, we have our GoFundMe page. Uh, we rely on in-kind donations to continue putting out these events and to speaking to schools and working with our students. Uh, so any donation that you could uh, help us with would really help us continue this journey and educating young people. So those are the main actions that you can take today. Um, and here is a short video from our celebrity and influencer guest, Alexa Curtis. Uh, we'll be posting other influencer and celebrity guests on our social media, like uh, Lisa Milano is actually joining us uh, and going to be speaking in a video for us. So those will be uh, on our social media page. But here's a quick and short video from Alexa. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Alexa Curtis. Curtis. I don't know why that's echoing. Hopefully, you guys. Are hearing this. I, just I just wanted, wanted to come, come on and welcome, welcome you to today's, today's climate, climate action, action crash course. course. I'm, I'm so, so excited, excited about this, this amazing, amazing, amazing day. day that um, Sarah, it's it's echoing yeah. because of Is the it? screen share. Yeah. What? It's echoing wow. through the screen share. Someone has uh, like, I mean, I'm wearing headphones, but someone has their uh, mic unmuted, so it's echoing. Okay. That. That's you want muting, Sarah. Here, I can I can everyone. mute everyone, and then it should it should go through. Awesome. Just wanted wanted to nope, we've still got someone's mic on. Let me look. Huh, it looks like everyone's mic is off. Um, I will post this video again on our social media if you guys want to hear more uh, about what Alexa said and you can check it out there because I don't I don't know it's echoing. I don't uh, I think it'll work better that way.
So. Great. Well, that was our webinar series for ages under 10. Thank you everyone so much for joining us. You can learn more at www.climatenow.solutions with the QR code that's in my background and that's uh, right there. And that is all our social media platforms. Sienna will be posting uh, in the chat uh, another link which will bring you to some of the slides and all those key actions that we presented today. I really just want to end this on the note that you all are so incredible. You have the power to change the world. Don't ever doubt that we are here to support you. So please reach out to us if you need help. If you have any questions, uh, we will be seeing on afterwards if anyone wants to stay and talk with us. Thank you again to our panelists for joining us. And you know, with that, I hope everyone has a good day. Make sure to share uh, the rest of our webinars with your friends and family. We have one on consecutive on um, Thursdays at 4 p.m. PST, 7 p.m. EST, up until April 22nd, which is Earth Day. Um, thank you everyone so much for being here. It was such a pleasure getting uh, to share. <laughs>